Hello, hello. This is Donna Reach, How I Teach with the Language Arts Lady. I am excited today to bring you a lesson that you can use with your students in grades four um, up to about eighth grade. And I will, of course, give you tweaks going both directions. So before we get started on today's lesson, let me just give you um, some housekeeping items here. This is a broadcast, a podcast as well as a video cast. You can follow along on uh, audio in your favorite podcast provider um, more easily if you have your teacher's notebook in front of you. I'm going to go to that just a second. Otherwise, watching the video will get the entire PowerPoint presentation in front of you, just like you see here. So we do have a teacher's notebook for you, and here it is. And the teacher's notebook is a free lesson booklet that comes with every episode. So all of the episodes of uh, the How I Teach broadcast um, are available for you at your favorite podcast provider as well as YouTube and the Language Arts Lady blog. And then each week you can get a free teacher's notebook that has the lessons. So basically you can watch me teach this today, print it off and teach it to your students. This is a super, super fun essay um, that would be a great end of the year uh, essay to use with your kids. Here is where you can get this. This is how, forward slash how I teach, languageartsplitybloggcom forward slash how I teach. That is for the individual. All the 47 episodes are there, video, audio, outlines, uh, teacher's notebooks, and so forth. Or you can get the entire teacher's notebook there at forward slash teacher's notebook, all 47 lessons. All right, without further ado, let's go into the um, slideshow presentation. All right, so this comes from Right for a Month, Beauty and the Beast, level three. So Right for a Month books, there are, um, well, by the summer, there will be 40 Right for a Month books, or maybe 45. I always get that mixed up. I think it might be 45. There will be 40 or 45 month-long writing books, and those are available at the Language Arts Lady store. And they're downloadable completely, so you can just print off what you need. And this particular one is level three. So level three is, level one is second and third grade. Level two is fourth and fifth. Level three is sixth, seventh and eighth. So I'm gonna bring this lesson down. I'm gonna bring this lesson up and help you see how you can use it um, even as a single standalone paragraph for younger kids. It'll be super, super fun even in that way. And then level four is a ninth and 10th and level five is upper high school. So this is called the five paragraph fun essay uh, for middle schoolers, and it is going to include opening and closing paragraph instruction. Uh, I often don't have a lot of time for that uh, in here, and I, as I promised before, I am going to get to all of my different opening and closing paragraph templates. I just taught today, hot off the press, the definition paragraph for um, an opening for to introduce a dialogue essay. Just fantastic work being done in these last, um, this last quarter of our classes here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. All right, so we're gonna move on over to the overview box. So you've probably heard me call this the expectation explanation box because we explain all expectations to our students before we expect them to do anything, right? We don't give them vague ideas. We don't tell them in passing what they will be doing. We give full explanations of what is expected of them. And then we teach them the skills that they need to complete that assignment, to be successful. We are the uh, bridge to their success by giving them all of the skills and tools that they need to be successful. So I'll tell you what I always tell my students. Put your sticker on the top of your overview box and write OV box on it. And do not use your homework color because these are not homework assignments. This is an overview box that tells you what the entire project is going to be from start to finish by the time you do uh, the pre-writing, the outlining, the uh, rough draft, three paragraphs, the opening paragraph, the closing paragraph, the checklist challenge, and the final, it'll be about three or four weeks in that whole process. Remember your assignments are here with letters and little diamonds telling you what to do. So let's look at the big picture. The big picture is that this is a darling essay 
about three castle objects you would like as friends. It comes from the Beauty and the Beast series, and the Beauty and the Beast series has some informative information, uh, informative writing about castles, uh, some story writing about castles, and some essay writing about castles. So very, very cool uh, book series uh, with Beauty and the Beast um, elements. So the uh, Roman number one is the topic of the essay. So they are going to choose three castle objects you would like as friends. So let me just tell you right off the bat that this is so versatile, right? You could use this whole document, teach this as it is given for three castle objects you would like as friends, and then you can, um, this turned down. Then you can use the same um, document for three ship uh, objects you would like as friends, for three um, medieval village uh, items that you would like as friends, for three um, inanimate objects in a um, uh, pioneer village that you would like as friends. It is just so versatile. Of course, all of the essays, the three of, three of, three of, and I've talked about those a lot here in previous episodes. As a matter of fact, the very first episode was writing the three favorites, which is number episode number one, which is a great intro into essay writing because everybody has favorites and they know what they like and why they like it. So that is why that's a fantastic beginning project but they are going to choose three castle objects. I always give them a list, but they don't have to use one of those. They, they don't have to use those three, three off of that. They can use anything they want. So suit of armor, torch, chair, gate, bed, cloak, shoes, so on and so forth. All right, I'm gonna move on down here since it's a split screen here. Three paragraphs for the body, basic students. So that would be like fifth and sixth will be six and eight, six to eight sentences each. Seventh and eighth will be seven to 10 sentences each. You could, of course, bring this down to like a fourth or fifth grade level and just have four or five sentences or three to five sentences in each paragraph if you still wanted to keep the three paragraph body. Another great way to utilize this with younger kids is to give them this list of topic uh, possibilities and have them just choose one and write about that one. All right, so six to eight sentences in each paragraph versus seven, seven to 10, depending on level. Everybody's going to write an opening paragraph. Everybody's going to write a closing paragraph. They will use sources. I'm gonna to get to that in just a moment. Uh, the importance of something like this as being a um, bridge to research writing. They uh, do have to put one quote in it, but that of course can be uh, increased or decreased in difficulty. You could give them a quote to use for the opening paragraph about castles, you could, if they're not very adept at quote writing yet, you could have them not put any quotes in at all. You could have them um, have to do a quote opening and one other quote in the body for more advanced writers. So there, it's very, very versatile. All right, and then we're gonna have all of these additional skills uh, in, within this project. All right, so let's get right to it. Um, I talk, I've talked about this before on this episode, and that is the idea of three topics in an essay, one topic per paragraph. It is so freeing for students to be able to say, I'm doing three types of dogs. My first paragraph is collies. My second paragraph is schnauzers. My third paragraph is German shepherds. And then I tell my students, guess what? It's not like you have to write a three paragraph essay it is like you're writing three mini essays, right? So we always want to chunk down, chunk down, chunk down. We want them to see how things can be easier than they maybe have previously thought. And so this three, one, three, one paragraph approach does that. It says you're going to have three paragraphs and you're going to pull them all together into one. And so in the case of the three favorites that I talked about in episode number one, um, I also did a um, three, uh, three um, favorite hook characters. Um, I've also done um, three favorite um, friends from the Jungle Book story 
um, three favorite holiday traditions. Okay, so all of these are ways that they can focus on one essay at a time and then bring those together. All right, uh, you may remember from some of my uh, essays with advanced students, we call them one three one rather than five paragraph because they can do, they have, they'll do three paragraphs to the body. They can do an opening paragraph or just an opening sentence, depending on the assignment. They can do one at the end. That would be either a closing paragraph or just a closing sentence. So I like to call it the one, three, one, because it focuses on the body, but they have to have something at the beginning. They have to have something at the end. This works really well to dovetail into timed writing where they usually don't have time for a full opening paragraph and a full closing paragraph. All right, just like always, I start with our student sample. Now I'm going to walk you through uh, what I would do if you were in my class right now and we open to this sample. So I would tell you to get out multiple colors of highlighter and I would tell you to, um, First of all, look at the very last sentence of the opening paragraph. And I would tell you to underline or highlight that and draw an arrow to your margin. And then I would ask the class, what would you write in the margin? And they know me well enough to know that at this point, they would write thesis statement. At the end of this opening paragraph, there's a thesis statement that introduces all three topics of the paper. So they would draw an arrow to the margin and write thesis statement. All right, then I would have them use three different colors and I would have them highlight armor in one, draw an arrow to the margin and write one. I would have them highlight torch in another color, draw an arrow to a mar the margin and write two, and then highlight rug in a third color, draw an arrow to the margin and write three. And then I would remind them <laughs> or tell them for the first time that they will have three paragraphs, three topics, three castle objects that you would like as friends. And when you write your thesis statement, you put your items in your thesis statement in the same order as what you were going to put them in the body of your paper. So I would remind them that since they highlighted armor and wrote a one, that means that that will be the topic of the first paragraph. And two, torch will be the topic of the second paragraph. And Three, rug will be the topic of the third paragraph. All right, then I would uh, tell them to uh, underline the first sentence of the second paragraph, which is the first paragraph of body, P-O-B. And I would tell them that that introduces that paragraph's topic. So we already have our thesis statement for the entire project. Now we're going to look at the topic of that paragraph. And it says a suit of armor would be amazing to have as a friend for three reasons. All right, we would underline that. And I'd find then that's your topic sentence of that paragraph, right? That tells your reader what your paragraph is about. And then it has the three reasons why a suit of armor would be amazing to have as a friend. Incredibly easy to put on. Each armor piece could jump onto my body and tighten perfectly. It would give me a huge advantage in battle. And while I attacked with my sword, my suit could use my shield to defend me. When I began to tire, it could move both hands for me. Finally, it would provide me with increased mobility as the heavy armor could march with me under its own power. All right, then we would move to paragraph three. And I would say, what color did you, paragraph two of the body, what color did you mark torch with, right? Come back here, down here to this paragraph about the torch and highlight the transition from the armor to the torch. Another useful object to have as a friend would be a torch. And then of course, that is going to be all about the torch being his friend. And then I would say, and what is POB, the paragraph of body three about? And they would say that was about a rug. And I would say, yes, bring that same color down here and underline a suit, the uh, third paragraph of the body the next last paragraph of the whole paper, underline a suit of armor and a torch would be fantastic friends, but what about a rug? And so that is our transition, right? It's telling the reader, you know what? We talked about armor, we talked about torch. I'm going to give you a third one that I think is also great. And then there is the whole body. Now we read these out loud together 
and code it all as we go through um, every paragraph. All right, we're gonna come back and talk about this opening paragraph and this closing paragraph later. But again, if you are trying to do this with younger students who are not completely ready for the five paragraph, then you can just um, do three paragraphs to the body and add a thesis statement to the beginning and a thesis statement reloaded to the end. We'll get to that. All right, so the first thing they're going to do is write their working thesis statement. It's important that students know that their working thesis statement tells them what the whole paper is going to be about. It might not be the one that they end up with because thesis statements, the exact wording of them change based on the type of opening paragraph that they want to include. Uh, if they're including a story paragraph or a dialogue paragraph or a definition paragraph or a quote paragraph or a statistic paragraph or a poetry paragraph or something like that, that thesis statement can change a little bit. So that's why we call this the working thesis statement. All right. Now, in the in the uh, argument of writing an opening paragraph first versus writing the body first, I'll just uh, address this here for a little bit. And that is that in order to introduce the body of a paper, the reader has to have written it. The reader cannot uh, introduce, intrigue, interest, how about that alliteration of it, 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 cannot do those things for their reader in an opening paragraph if they haven't written the body yet, if they don't know what the body is going to contain. So we do not write our opening paragraphs first around these parts. <laughs> we always write the thesis statement first. Then we write the, then we outline the body, then we write the body, and then we're like, wow, this is what the body contains. How can I make this interesting? How can I help readers enjoy, want to go on and read the body of this paper? So they're gonna design their working thesis statement there. And there's a sample, again, the armor, torch, and rug. Then they are going to do a little research. Now, the beauty of this type of essay, as opposed to the first episode, which was uh, three favorites essay, um, they're not three favorites, yeah, your three favorites, your three favorites, whether you're doing, you know, your three favorite um, uh, pizza toppings or whatever it might be, is that once we get into this kind of uh, essay where it is information that they might not have at their fingertips, that they may not already know, it's not as personal as my three favorites, right? So when it's not as personal, personal, then they need to, to gather information right? Like uh, even in a sample that had the writer had to know that how a, how a, an uh, armor attaches, how, um, uh, let's see where I was, who's armor, torch, how the torch was used in this time. And uh, I would not have guessed a rug, Right, so I would have read something about rugs in order to talk about the rug as my friend. So the beauty of this is that they are going really from essay writing into research without even realizing it, right? There's no pressure for them. They just want information. It's really phenomenal because right now my kids just did um, two groups, I think, uh, just did a three elephant, um, ele three aspects of elephants and one student did three ways elephants have served in battles so interesting and not just necessarily something that they're going to know about somebody else did three children's literature books that have elephants as their main characters this is from my gumbo series by the way and that is uh that was the saggy baggy elephant um uh, oh, we just lost it. It was, um, uh, <laughs> okay, let me get it back. It was Dumbo, the flying elephant, Babar, the elephant, and the saggy baggy elephant. So stinking cute. But she's going to have to grab some facts, right? She's going to need some information about those. And so we have this research going on that is very needed, but it's also desired. They really want to do it. Okay, then they're going to come in and outline. And before we uh, outline, I bring them back here to their 
underlining. And I say, look at this. A suit of armor would be amazing to have as a friend for three reasons. Remember when you underlined that and you said that is the topic for that whole paragraph? Come down here. Another useful object to have as a friend would be a torch. Remember when we underlined that? We said that is the topic of that, but it's also a link because it sets another useful object. So we're going from one paragraph to another. And look at the third one. A suit of armor and a torch would be fantastic friends, but what about a rug? We are linking this one with the previous two. So by working in these samples all the time, we have everything right at our fingertips to teach from. All right, so they're going to come here to outline. And the reason I wanted to do that is because I want them to understand what is on the outlining card that they will need. So uh, notice we have paragraph A of body, POB A, paragraph of body A, that's the first paragraph of the body. And B is the second paragraph of the body and C is the third paragraph of the body. And of course the opening is separate and the closing is separate. They're gonna put their first castle object on this line and then they're going to either put their link or their transition. So they're assuming there's an opening of some type. And they're going to say, my first favorite castle friend would be, so they would just make some notes right here. First castle friend equals, um, and then they have their support sentences. Support sentence one, SS1, SS2, SS3, and all the way down. These support sentences support how whatever they introduced here. And they come along here and they're going to say another castle friend or a second castle friend. And they're going to have that link right here in their outline. So when they write, it's so much more fluid because they have already determined what that link is going to be. And then their SSs, their support sentences for paragraph two and the same thing for paragraph three. All right, then they're going to write. So uh, they are going to use any information that they got from here during their research that they might need as their outlining, plus anything as they put it from their brains, right? From their brains. I had a little uh, second grader today say, um, I said, is this really true about what you wrote about butterflies and their hunting habits? And he said, I don't know for sure. I got it in my brain. <laughs> yes. And that little second grader just happened to be my grandson. So um, yeah, it's such a joy to teach your grandkids. I love it. All right. So, so they have the information from their brains as well as whatever they've researched. All right, moving on here, they're ready to write. And so they're going to use their outline. They're going to make sure they have the three in the same order that they want. If they want to renumber them or put them in a different order, they'll do it now. They're going to um, add notes to any paragraph that they don't think they have enough information or that they want more information, or they might take out something that they don't feel fit after they've finished the outline and as they're preparing to write. All right, and then they're going to double space it either in their notebook or on, pay, on notebook paper or keying it on the computer. All right, now that they've done that, they are ready to write their opening paragraph and their closing paragraph. So I always try to give ideas to them that they could use uh, as an opening. And also keep in mind that uh, my students have had uh, templates for most of these of uh, what they're going to fill in and what all they would include in that type of opening paragraph. But even without it, they can know that they're gonna get a statistic like the number of castles built during a certain time period or the number of castles now existing in the world or something like that. They're going to define a castle and get some more uh, support information for a definition paragraph. They could tell a story such as King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. They could use a song like about fortresses or something. They could use a rhyme. Um, they could use uh, the story of Beauty and the Beast for that matter. They could open with half the story and close with the second half, bookending their essay with uh, two paragraphs of story writing. They could use a scripture passage or words of wisdom uh, that they might have. Um, they could uh, act like they are a king living in a castle and speak in the first person. Um, they could use a quote, so on and so forth. And this will be uh, commensurate with the body. So this will be um, six to eight sentences long, short, uh, younger kids can do fewer. They know that three sentences um, is minimum that they will need for a good paragraph. But they want it to. They want to make it, you know, correlate with their body a little bit. It's in terms of length and 
uh, sophistication and so forth. So they will choose the type, they will outline and they will write. So I didn't include all those lines in there because it takes up a lot of space for you to print, but all right. And then here we have closing paragraph. Now, um, oh, I also remind them here it says, remember a, to include your thesis statement. You can tweak your original one and you can play it, you can put it in wherever you want it. So uh, we talk about, you know, the different positions for a thesis statement, like is it better at the beginning, is it better in the middle, is it better at the end, uh, based on the type. So, you know, if people want to use poetry, it's really, uh, we just had somebody use poetry today uh, for a volcano paper, and it was element, an elementary student. And, you know, what I told her was that you don't want to have your thesis statement be before that poetry, because look how nice that poetry looks lined up as the first paragraph, you know, the beginning of your paper, and then you're going to want your thesis to fall later. You don't want to say, you know, volcanoes or da 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 and then have your poem, because it can take away from the poetry when you put the thesis statement first. So they will, of course, you know, put the thesis statement someplace in their opening. All right, then they have the option of any of those things they didn't use from the opening paragraph list, they could use as a closing paragraph, or they could uh, finish their story, King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table at the end, or they could finish their story of Beauty and the Beast or Cinderella's Castle or some other such things. They could also just write, um, uh, you know, um, famous castles that people are aware of, you know, maybe uh, and include some tidbits about different castles. Uh, and I always show them on my phone, you know, I say, you can go on the Googles and you can say, um, uh, Facts about castles, facts about modern castles, facts about medieval castles, and so forth. All right, and then they're going to do their closing, and they're going to have their thesis statement reloaded. So they're going to include something in the closing. So we will go back during this time, actually during the opening and closing, we will come back here. And we will see that the opening for this says, castles have existed in one form or another for thousands of years. The European castle building age began in the 9th century and lasted until the 15th century. People began constructing these fortresses after Europe was divided into thousands of tiny kingdoms. Constant raids and counterattacks between these states forced people to create bastions for protection. At that castles were fantastic friends in case of enemy attack and over 75,000 were built in Western Europe. What if more than stone walls were your partners, though? What if the objects inside a castle could come alive? Three castle objects I would like as friends are a suit of armor, a torch, and a light. I know, my writing assistant, Zach, he's fantastic, right? But it really does encourage the kids because they're like, oh, I'm, I'm going to tell about how many castles. That's a cool way to say it. Or, you know, I'm going to tell about time periods in castles or something like that. It does really give them a lot of ideas. All right, and then he has a quote closing. And so I will point this out to the students, a speech tag Thomas Aquinas once said, Aquinas, Aquinas, I can't remember how you say that. There is nothing on this earth more to be prized than true friendship, right? It's a quote about friendship. And then he is going to bring it together. A suit of armor, a torch and a rug would all be three fabulous friends. There's his thesis reloaded. And then he has a little summary of friendship in and castle objects. Very, very, very cool. All right, so then they have a full five paragraph paper, right? Let me go back to that. But they have a full five paragraphs, uh, an opening, three paragraphs of the body, and a closing. Again, this can be done with so many things. You know, I, I did an episode at Christmas time about three holiday traditions, and um, it, it, it's just, it's unlimited. And it can really just stretch your students into uh, going from general essays, what, my, what I think about something, what my favorite cookies are, what my favorite um, uh, Disney Plus shows are, whatever it might be, on into something that they need to gather information. And not only do they need to, but again, that they are excited about gathering. All right, I made my time limit today. I'm so proud of myself. All right, so you can grab these sheets, all of the episodes. Uh, are listed uh, in the languageartsladyblog.com, how I teach uh, with their topics and click on them and you get the audio, the video, the description and the how I teach teacher's notebook. 
You can get all of them again here at forward slash teachers notebook. Um, after long your study blog, I put a couple of free products here that you can get at the blog. Um, and these are just three Peter Pan books that are more at this kind of level. Uh, Peter Pan 3, Peter uh, Mowgli 4, sorry, and Peter Pan 5. So these are the freebie lessons that you can grab uh, that are uh, books with teaching videos, right? Turn the page when you hear the bell ring. And I'm actually on the video teaching direct camera for your students. You can take the week off. All right, here are some other great um, places where you can find this type of writing. Question and answer outline, paragraph, uh, writing for castles, three castle objects as friends, before and after description, uh, character analysis, three Christmas decorations, three holiday traditions, favorite concession, three places to find elephants, three movie quotes, just a lot of, uh, and then there's more over here, three fairy tales, a uh, history of one fairy tale, one animal, the jungle, three favorite characters, three ways to survive in a jungle, just on and on, three characters, as say three reasons why Hook is a good villain or Peter Pan is a good hero. So, so many things that we can do with the body of a three paragraph essay that actually uh, really get students excited. These are also found in my uh, faith-based full semester books, which are all downloadable now, Meaningful Composition, in uh, these particular volumes, especially 4.1, 4.2, 5.1, 5.2, and so forth, all the way down to the two remediation books. Thank you so much for joining me and uh, being a part of the Language Arts Lady World. Really appreciate that. Check out some of our offerings that we have for online teaching. And as summer approaches, um, you know, if you want some remediation for your students, four week, six week, eight week remediation online um, in any subject area, really, because my husband is like, yeah. He teaches everything, um, and I teach language arts and writing, <laughs> mostly some reading. Um, but get a hold of us, and we can probably help you out. Thanks again for joining me. Um, this has been Language Arts Lady Donna Reish, and it's good to have you. See you next time.